So we were talking about uh, some of the best generational college football players, and we had capped the timeline on the last 25 years. Reggie Bush seems to be a constant in that discussion. Joe Burrow seems to be in that discussion, and a lot of people have the third up for debate. We've seen some Johnny Manziel, some Cam Newton, some Tyron Matthews. Uh, T and I were talking a little bit in the break that uh, that three running back monster of uh, Ricky Williams, yeah. uh, Ron Dane. Yeah. Who am I leaving off there? Uh, I don't know because we only discussed yeah, those two names. Two. Well, no, Adrian Peterson <laughs> uh, was the oh, third back. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. My bad. My bad. Adrian AP. Peterson was AD. the third back uh, in that uh, in that list that we were talking about in the uh, in the break of uh, of running backs that have had such. I'm, I mean, the Facebook chat's popping off with with Tim Tebow. Tebow and Tebow was an absolute animal. In college, uh, the only thing and Tebow's fair, because like uh, the, the, the 2007 game that you know is glorified around here and goes down as one of the best of all time. Yeah, I wanted to hate Tim Tebow that night, but I left Tiger Stadium with so much respect for him. I know that the the clip and the image that we'll always see is him crying leaving the field, but the one that always stands out to me is him shooting the phone to the ear up to the student section after yeah. the first touchdown because. The students had gotten their hands on Tebow's phone number throughout yeah. game week. And I think, I mean, like they had forced him to change his number a I couple remember. of times because they had called him over like 5,000 times in a night. Um, but but he, he broke free on a run against that 07 defense that was legit yeah. and, and got into that end zone in front of the student section and picked up his hand like he was dialing the phone and put it to his ear. And I thought to myself, man, for as much as I want to hate you tonight, I'm going to love you when you leave, man, With because that was just he, – he earned my respect. So I, I absolutely see Tebow there. Cam Newton, who you played against, who you always say had – that that play, I would take, that, I would, play yeah. that Newton made against Joel in, in Jordan-Hare where he runs away from Patrick Peterson – uh, to break that long run, that that was probably his Heisman moment. Oh it de- no, it definitely was. It was uh, in, in in my football watching, it was the most clear kind of, and we love talking about the cl- it's almost cliche, right? The Heisman moment. It was the most clear single play that can point to mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. It, it's over. I mean, to to finish that run by Stiff Army Pat Peterson. I I remember exactly where I was. I talked about yesterday. Yesterday I talked about the first day of reporting being burned into my brain. I remember that exact feeling. It's 2.30 CBS game. Yeah. I'm sitting on the bench. It's a close game. We've kind of been battling back and forth and struggling. It's a hell of a game. And that place was going crazy after that run. And I just remember kind of at that moment being like, mm, well, that's uh, – Pack that's, it up. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's probably it now. Uh, that's wild. I, I would actually take Newton over Tebow, even though Tebow has a greater accumulation of right. numbers over the years. But – he was also surrounded by NFL talent. The thing that's amazing about Newton and that Auburn team, they had nobody. They had Cam Newton and Nick Fairley. Nobody else. I don't think anybody else made the league from those teams. I could be a bit wrong. Maybe one or two guys, but like there was not a lot of superstars, and he dragged that team to a natty. And they weren't even that good at first. Remember, they were having like comeback wins against, like I think it was like Mississippi State yeah. and close games against Kentucky, but he just got more and more dominant as the year went on, and then it 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 ended, culminated in him getting Auburn a national championship ring, and Gene Chizik yeah. a national championship ring. I mean, look what happened to Chizik just a year later. Did he go when over? Newton left? He went over. I don't think they won a game. Did they? I, I I'll, I'll have to check the numbers, but I mean, he got fired, right? And so it was like it was the drop off and the rise was so steep on both sides with Newton that it's an impact from a single player that I've never seen anywhere else. And I'm so biased in this discussion because I think everybody's heard my stance on on Tyron Matthew when we bring him up on this on this yeah. show. I think outside of Kevin Falk, he should be on the list of guys that had that that should have their number or name retired in the facade of Tiger Stadium because of the impact that he had on LSU and just his two seasons there. Danny and I were talking or Danny was telling the group in the in the break, 26 games Matthew played, he forced 14 turnovers in those 26 games, mm. and you think about those 14 turnovers in the time that he made those plays, and every single yep. time it seemed like LSU had to have it. Well, I'm I almost mean, like, take out take out the Danny, look it up too, take out the freshman year. I want to see if you can, how many turnovers he forced just sophomore year, because but, it was an absurd clip. But if we want to go back to his freshman year, I mean, I still think about that play in the swamp where he blitzes against the Florida quarterback, gets knocked to the ground, 
chases the ball carrier mm. down. It was on a screen route, yeah. and he strips it from behind, and it was one of those patented strip plays where he forces the fumble and just takes it away from from the player and turns it over and just thinking, my goodness, man, who is this cat? And then two years later, just to kind of see that on the regular. I mean, to think about that night y'all made the trip to West Virginia and the plays he made, I mean, coming up on the line of scrimmage and batting the ball yeah. in the air against Geno Smith and almost turning it in to a to yeah, a he score. set us up on the one. Set you up on the one. He also had another one of those strip plays again that night against West Virginia, the plays against Oregon, the SEC championship game where you guys offensively couldn't get out of your own way, and the only reason why you're on the scoreboard hey, is because of look, the punt man, return. I didn't play the first half against Georgia, okay? And we didn't we didn't get a first down. You want me to dump I on Miles How here? about this? You want me to go in How on about Miles? This? I didn't play the first half against Georgia. We didn't get a first down. I didn't play the natty. We didn't cross the 50. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, correlation doesn't always equal causation. But, Coaching but, decision. But what's going on? No, but look, in all seriousness, the game that I think back to it, it's probably just because it's the forefront of my mind with Tyron. And then we get some of these other names. But uh, when, when me and Blackwell were at the camp a few weeks back, as one does, you start to relive your old memories, try to remember when your life was awesome. Yeah. And uh, we watched the Texas a and Cotton Bowl, and Tyron Ooh. Matthew was all over the field. Pick six. Unbelievable. Force fumble. Yeah. I mean, like, he, he, he Pass had breakups. It was, it was just, it was, it was everything. Um, Steve Miller saying that West Virginia was rocking before Mo Claiborne returned that kick. Yeah, I remember. For sure. Um, other, okay, what about somebody, also, somebody Beckham mentioned. Beckham Jr. had a big play that night. Somebody mentioned Glenn Dorsey. Yeah. I mean, this is a bit tough because it always, like all college football conversations, it tends to be offensive centric and it tends to be quarterback centric as well. And you get why it's just the nature of football. But I mean, what more could you ask out of a defensive player than what Glenn Dorsey did in terms of both individual accolades, team accolades, winning championships? Like he is without a doubt, one of the greatest football players of our generation. The thing that I'll always remember about Dorsey is, um, you know, his senior season, it totally changed gears after that Auburn game in the middle of it. Yeah. Where he's making plays, and then that, uh, who what was it? Pugh? Jordan Pugh. It was Jordan Pugh who took the, one of the cheapest shots that, that still to this day I've ever seen in a football. I mean, just blatantly went at Dorsey's knee. I was the number and, two center in the nation in high school, and Jordan Pugh was number one. Really? Yeah. Low character guy, though, obviously. No, I'm just kidding. He was, he was fine. Uh, but well, that I mean, was it was a dirt ball play. It was dirty. Um, and in his junior season, he, you know, up until that point of his senior year, he was, he, was, he was dominant. Now, he was getting doubled and triple teamed every Saturday. So, I mean, he was earning it his final season. But his junior year, I mean, he was, he yeah. was unblockable mm-hmm. when he was one on one. It was like an Aaron Donald type of, yeah. uh, type of impact. Uh, so yeah, keep 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 the names yeah. coming in. I'm I'm interested to see what names were kind of uh, missing so far. Now, as far as like guys like Bo Jackson, that was a little bit before my yeah, we did 25 years. Yeah, that's just before my memory, so I can't really speak to some of the older players there. 